The first reading is from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. The second reading from the book of 1 Corinthians. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. There are a variety of servants, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by one Spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discernment of spirit, and to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Here ends the reading. Sisters and brothers, I'm so glad to be here today. I have been so delighted with the way you have welcomed me into your community these last few months, given me the opportunity to journey with you, to explore new ways to minister, and to love me. So thank you. I'm glad to be here today, particularly on this day of Pentecost. Pentecost, you may not know, did not begin with the early Christian movement. In fact, Pentecost had been a, a, a festival of the Jewish people for quite a long time. It was called the Festival of Weeks, and it probably celebrated the, the God's covenant with Noah. But this was a special Festival of Weeks. This was a special day on which the Spirit of God poured upon the apostles. Something happened that day. Now, first, I need to tell you a little bit about the, the, the Acts of the Apostle. It's important to know that the Acts is the second part of the book of Luke. 
Luke and Acts are one continuous story. And so in order to understand the pouring out of the Spirit on the apostles, we need to understand the calling of the apostles as it's told in the Gospel according to Luke. So I'll refer to Luke some. You'll understand that, that Luke is a part of the story of Acts. On this day, something special happened. The apostles were gathered together for the Festival of Weeks. And the Spirit of God poured out on them. Now Jesus had promised, we call, had promised after the resurrection, according to Luke. Jesus said, And see, I am sending upon you what God has promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And this power did pour out onto the friends of Jesus. The power was symbolized in the story by the ability of each to speak languages that he had not known and yet to be understood by all who could hear. The power of God in the story is represented by the ability to reach into each person's heart and to be heard, to be understood, to be able to connect with all people who were around the house and could hear. Much has been made about these tongues in Christianity. Some folks have said that these, this, the ability to speak in tongues represents the universality of the Christian message. The, that, that the apostles were to preach not just to one particular group, but to everyone. In fact, in Acts, we are told, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now this line suggests, hints at a certain universality. God's spirit will be poured out on all flesh. Some Christian theologians have even suggested that all flesh means not only Christian flesh, but in fact all people. But I believe that the variety of tongues means something much more. It's more than just the ability to communicate the story of the gospel to people of all lands. I believe that the tongue represents a way that the apostle could minister to God's people, a means of communicating the truth and power of God to others, but more, a way to reach into other, others' hearts a way to be like Jesus to other folks. And so the tongues represent each apostles, including the women who were present, each apostles' special, unique ability to minister in a particular way. God was going to need each of these to participate with Jesus and with each other to bring about the healing of the world. What ministry works are they, they to accomplish? For what were they given the power and authority? Let's look at the original call of the apostles again in Luke. In Luke 9, then Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing disease everywhere. Curing dis-ease. The apostles were called and then sent out to heal in different ways. What is most important about this story of the call is this word, apostle. Now we know that in the particular story of the Pentecost, the word apostle refers to those who had gathered those original followers of Jesus, the disciples. But the Greek word on which apostle is based actually means something much bigger. It means those who are sent out. And when Jesus originally called the twelve, recall, 
the phrase is, he sent them out. This is very important for an understanding of Paul, and it's important to an understanding of the Christian mission. What are we here to do? For the, the original followers of Jesus are not the only apostles. All Christians are apostles because all, all of us have been sent out. We're accustomed to thinking of ourselves as disciples of Christ, but apostles? Have we really been sent out like the original women and men who followed Jesus during his ministry? Sisters and brothers, the scriptures tell us that not only have we been sent out, but that we have been perfectly equipped to do the work of building the kingdom of God. The scriptures do tell us much about God, but as much they tell us about ourselves, who we are and what we are to be doing as, as faithful people. And they tell us that we have a special mission. No, a special responsibility to go to work in the healing of God's people and in the building of the kingdom of God here on earth. Many of us, I know, don't quite feel up to the task. We don't feel like we have the strength, the faith, the skills that the world needs so desperately. We're too busy, too depressed too preoccupied with our careers to think about taking up a mission. Particularly one as urgent as God's mission. We also tend to have problems with ego. We, we either feel too big or too small to be a part of God's plan. We're like, we're like Moses when Moses was called. Do you remember the story? When Moses was called to go to the Hebrew people in Pharaoh's land and to free them to play an integral part in the history of God's people. Remember what Moses said? He said, no, not me. He said, I, I, I can't. He said, you should find somebody else. I'm not a very good public speaker. He said, I stutter. What did God say? God said, go. Go, because I have already given you all that you need, and because I will be there with you. You don't need to know ahead of time what to say or what to do, just go. God, you, sh you, sh you, should, get my you should get Aaron to do this. Go, God said, and so Moses Fearfully, reluctantly, went. This particular congregation has been planning a new ministry. We've been planning to go to the Carter Cook Center to visit folks with terminal illnesses, folks who are never going to leave Cardinal Cook, folks with AIDS or with some physical disability, which renders them uh, uh, unable to move about. Some folks in this congregation have expressed some reservation about, about volunteering to visit at the Cardinal Cook Center. Who am I? Some of you have said to me, what, what comfort can I give? I, I'm not, I have no training as a counselor. I'm not a minister. I don't even like hospitals. But the scripture tells us that all of us have been sent out and have already been equipped to serve God and to serve God's people. That is, we are apostles of Christ. And there is a role for each of us. We all have something to share. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, Paul wrote, Now concerning spiritual gifts, 
There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To each is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge, to one faith, to another gifts of healing, to another the working of miracles, to another the gifts of prophecy, the interpretation of tongues. The Spirit allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. We don't have to be able to perform miracles, or to prophesy, but we all can be a part of God's plan. We all can serve God and God's people, and in fact, this is what we must do as Christian people. We must do our part in sharing the message of liberation and in working to bring about that liberation, just as with the apostles together at Pentecost, when the Spirit descended upon them, each of us has been blessed with the life and energy, talent, passion, a life to use for the healing of the world. We have only to make the decision. But this is really key, the decision. Here I am, Lord, send me. close, I want to read to you a piece of spiritual wisdom. This comes to us not from the scriptures, but from the spiritual program of Alcoholics Anonymous. The idea here is the same as that which the scripture so urgently tries to tell us. Peace comes from saying yes to God, from taking our woundedness to God and using it somehow for the benefit of others, turning our attention outward to a very wounded world, devoting ourselves to the service of God. Here is this message. Still more wonderful is the feeling that we do not have to be specially distinguished among our fellows in order to be useful and profoundly happy. Not many of us can be leaders of prominence, nor do we wish to be. Service gladly rendered, obligations squarely met, troubles well accepted, or solved with God's help. The knowledge that at home or in the world outside we are partners in a common effort. The well understood fact that in God's sight all human beings are important. The proof that love freely given surely brings a full return. The certainty that we are no longer isolated and alone in self-constructed prisons. The surety that we need no longer be square pegs in round holes, but can fit and belong in God's scheme of things. These are the permanent and legitimate satisfactions of right living, for which no amount of pomp and circumstance, no heap of material possessions could possibly be substitutes. True ambition is not what we thought it was. True ambition is the deep desire to live usefully, and to walk humbly under the grace of God. Here I am, Lord, send me. We are willing to let go of our loneliness for just a moment. We are willing to relinquish our own little agendas, to, to Come with our, our woundedness, our doubt, our fear, our low self-esteem. If we can be willing just for a moment, just for a moment, then we can be of service to the Spirit. We can speak in our tongue. And we can say, with fear and also with faith, here I am, Lord, send me. <laughs>